Today I'm going to be reviewing the most viral skin tints on the internet and sharing with you whether or not they are worth it. I have 20 different skin tints that I'm going to demo and share my thoughts on with you guys. And I thought this the most appropriate time to do this because warmer days are coming, spring and summer are coming nearer and nearer, and if there's one thing I learned from living in Miami, it's that on those hottest, most humid days, I like a skin tint, and I am not a skin tint person. I love me some coverage, but on those most hot, humid, dreadful, heavy, thick air days, I need a skin tint. So with the warmer weather coming, I wanted to share what skin tints are worth it and what are not that you might be seeing because a lot of skin tints in the last year or two have launched, so I wanted to share my thoughts on those. The only skin tint that's missing is the new Super Goop skin tint because I haven't had enough time to test that out. But I've pulled these skin tints over a month ago and I've been wearing them. I've been putting my full coverage foundations to the side to do an ultimate skin tint review video. So let's get into it. Let's get going on the first two. I'm gonna do half and half demos so that I can compare close skin tints and also to save my face because we have a lot to put on today. So the first one I think is my top runner of my favorite skin tint. If there is one skin tint that you are looking to treat yourself with, I highly recommend the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. If you're a regular viewer of mine, this should be nothing new to you. Every time I wear this, my skin loves it. Oh, also, skin type. I do have a normal to dry skin type. Currently leaning more dry because of the cold weather that's been happening in Maryland lately. So I'm just using my fingers to spread this product out so you can see the coverage that it gives, which is pretty minimal. Oh, and pay no mind to the bad shade matches. Some of these I get in PR and I just make them work or I just wear them out as the wrong color to test the product or I bought these at different times of the year when I was more tan. So there's many reasons why some of these are not shade matches for me. I'm wearing six. This one's actually pretty good for me. I'm going to use a refer number 31 brush to just push this skin tint into the skin. So this one is really nice and hydrating. It has a light coverage as most of these skin tints will, but it pairs really well with concealer and like mushes really well with concealer. So you can kind of manipulate the illusion of coverage if you put some concealer over a wider area of the face. But just skin tint, this is how the hourglass looks. My skin looks juicy. This becomes one with the skin. It feels hydrating. This is one of my favorite skin tints. Now a close second, and I decided to start off on a positive note and share with you my favorites, but these are almost identical. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Skin Tint is also a very popular one and also one of my favorites. Everything that I like about the Hourglass, I like about the Danessa Myricks as well. They are very similar products. I've said this before, but I would say a hair more, I prefer the Hourglass, but that is really pushing it. If you pick up either of these, you're going to love them, I would say, most likely. The Danessa Myricks is a little bit cheaper, so if that makes your decision for you, there you go. You'll be happy either way. So I'm just using my finger. You can see as I spread it with my finger what kind of coverage this gives. Now, I hope you're not coming into this video expecting coverage because by nature, skin tints are, as they're described, tints on the skin. And the purpose of a skin tint really is just to even out the skin and generally speaking, it's supposed to hydrate the skin as well. They're really great for summer days because it doesn't feel too heavy on the skin and if like your skin is really sweaty and makeup begins to melt off of the skin, a skin tint normally is less affected by your skin being really sweaty because it's not gonna like melt off your face and if it does it's very graceful so this is the Danessa Myrick side and this is the hourglass side I would say you could probably get a hair more coverage 
I used to say with the hourglass, but today's application, I feel like this did not seem my risk gave more coverage. Regardless, these skin tints are kind of one in the same, and they're both amongst my all-time favorite with how skin-like they look and how well they mesh with other products. So you can really personalize how much coverage you get to the face based on what concealer you use. But if you want something really buttery, really hydrating, very skin-like, something that's just going to give an overall even look to the skin, especially with the Sephora sale coming up, these two. The next skin tint slash tinted moisturizer product that I have is an iconic one. The Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer has been a cult classic for years and years. It definitely is the most iconic skin tint in today's lineup. I have the oil-free one. They have a couple different versions, but this is the one I currently keep in my collection. And I wore this a couple times to retrace my memory on this. I love this skin tint. This is another favorite of mine in this lineup here. It gives less coverage than the first two that I shared, but it sits so well on the skin. And you know, I'm gonna use a lot of the same adjectives to describe the skin tints because there's not many ways to describe a skin tint. They're all gonna have a tint. It's just a matter if they look good on the skin or not and longevity buildability, hydration level. Okay, I'm gonna use my refer brush. Now this one does have a little bit of oxidation, so just be mindful when picking out your shade. This one is 2W1 Natural. If I was in store, I would probably pick out a lighter shade for myself, but this is a good summer shade for me. This one also looks very skin-like, but it has less glow compared to the first two. It has a natural, I don't want to say matte finish, but it's more of a natural finish in terms of having no additional shine or glow, which is something that you're going to find with a lot of the newer skin tints is about how glowy they can get the skin. So this one is really nice if you have more of an oily skin type because this one will tamper down the oils a little bit while staying nice and lightweight on the skin. This also has has a fantastic longevity as well. It truly is one of the best, most iconic tinted moisturizers for a reason. It looks truly like skin because of the lack of obnoxious glow that a lot of tinted moisturizers nowadays can give. And it doesn't sit on top of the skin. If you're looking for something reliable, the OG tinted moisturizer, this one, so nice. I definitely recommend this one for more oily skin types, trying to get that nice even coverage here, but of course it is a light coverage. You can still see plenty of freckles and etc. on the skin. Remember, this is not in a particular order. I'm more so just trying to pair tinted moisturizers that can be commonly compared. So next we have Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint. I saw this a few months ago everywhere all over my feed. So I, I tried it recently. I hate this. I do not recommend this skin tint. This is one of the worst in today's lineup. And Bobbi Brown is a very good brand. This is really watery. You don't even have to push on the component to get too much product swimming out. Be warned, I did make a mess with this product before, but I don't know, Bobbi Brown really creates fantastic complexion products that I think, generally speaking, are underrated, but this one has no coverage. I feel like the coverage or pigment swims onto the dryness and dry patches of my face. My skin always looks really dry when I wear this, which should be the opposite considering it is a skin tint. This one does contain SPF 15. I am using my refer brush to push this product in. This shade is light three. It also is quite dark on my skin tone, but I'm normally like a light medium. I find this hard to spread. I've tried always of applying it, just fingers with the sponge and with a brush. Nothing works. It applies patchy. It looks patchy. I never have an even application with this product. And do you see how it's literally sitting on the hairs of my face, on the dry patches, and it also is patchy. You can see it's not blended onto my cheek. My nose is all textured versus, and it's p pilling. On what, I'd like to know. I don't even have skincare on my face. 
I mean, just compare that to how good the Laura Mercier side looks. Then you can see how this Bobbi Brown is sitting and how patchy and difficult to work with it is. So this one was a big disappointment considering the price point. If you're seeing people recommend this, please go in with caution with this product because I have had no luck with this one personally. For me, I, I hate this one, especially for the price point. Hate it, hate it, hate it. When the Fenty Beauty eShop Blurring Skin Tint launched a couple years ago, it really was quite the buzz of the town. I'm gonna use shade 6 today. I really love the packaging of this. It's nice and compact. Not the most liquidy consistency we've seen, but it's pretty on par with most skin tints. So I'm just gonna use my finger as per usual so you can see how it blends with a finger. Now I'm telling you right now, I also really like this skin tint. It was one of my yearly favorites, I believe, the year that it launched. And if not, it was a contender. This one also on the light coverage front. But this one isn't as glowy. It's kind of similar to the Laura Mercier in that it's going to be good if you have more of an oily skin type. And this is one that it kind of dries down itself and you don't need to blend it too much. But do keep in mind that it will dry down itself a little bit. So you don't need to work fast per se with this. But you also shouldn't just let it sit on the skin. And as it dries down, it loses a lot of the glow that you might see from a lot of skin tints. So this one is one of the most matte skin tints that you're going to see in today's video. Which I think makes it really great for oily skin. That being said, I do have more of a dry skin type. But I really like a skin tint like this. Especially in the summer because if I get sweaty, this has more longevity. It is quote unquote more cakey and less skin-like than some of the ones you'll see. Because it isn't the most skin-like. It doesn't melt into the skin. But because it's more matte, it actually blurs over some imperfections and texture on the face, making this one actually very flattering on the skin. So if you have textured or porous skin, this might be the best option for you. However, if you have peach fuzz, this one might attract to the peach fuzz, so be careful with that. But overall, this is one of the drier skin tints that you're going to see today but it also will have great longevity and I do have dry skin and it still looks good on me so if you need something a little bit more drying something that's not going to be overly glowy especially at the end of the day the Fenty will be good for you I really like this one Rare Beauty is our next victim here this is their positive light tinted moisturizer it has SPF 20 this one you have to squeeze kind of hard to get the product out this is the shade 24N. It is a little deep on me right now. The consistency of this is thicker, so it's not going to be really liquidy. You do have to kind of blend it out on the skin, put a little bit more effort into it than the others. It's not a bad thing though. Sometimes these thicker ones have better longevity on the skin. Now, if you've watched my Rare Beauty videos, you know that this is not a favorite of mine from the brand. I find that it looks thicker than most other skin tints. It sits on top of the skin and can look cakey, considering that it is just supposed to be a lightweight tint. It just got a little patchy on my cheek here as I use a brush to blend that in. So I'm going to put a second layer here. It's just not as flattering. I know there's a large number of customers who do enjoy this skin tint, but I can say as somebody who's tried almost every skin tint on the market, this one is not what I would consider flattering. It's not unflattering. It's not terrible. It's not like the Bobbi Brown, but I just think there are better skin tints out there on the market. And if, as you continue to layer this, because sometimes you do want a little bit more coverage out of your skin tints, this will begin to look cakier and cakier. The best way to get the most natural pretty look with this product is to do as thin of a layer as possible. And then I think you'd really like the finish of it. As I add more, it starts to get patchy. It starts to sit on top of the skin and just look thick, which is not what I want from a skin tint. So personally, the Rare Beauty is not the one that I would go for. It's never been a favorite of mine. I don't know if you can see, it's hard to tell on camera, but in person, I can see how the Fenty has kind of smoothed the skin 
whereas this one is just sitting on top of this skin, the Rare Beauty. So not my favorite one. This one might be the most expensive of today's video. It is the Chantecaille Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. This is one that hasn't necessarily gone viral, but it is one that I've sung praises about on my channel. So I did want to mention this one. This is definitely a treat yourself moment here. This one has SPF 15 and I have the shade Vanilla. Normally Vanilla, I would say, is pretty light. This one has a little bit of color to it. It's gonna be just a wee bit too dark on my skin tone today. I love this skin tint here. It is thicker in consistency, but one of the things that makes this product stands out to hopefully justify it in your head a little bit more if you do plan on purchasing this, is that Chantecaille is first and foremost what I would consider to be a skincare brand. All of their products are formulated with skincare in mind, and they are a luxurious skincare brand. Now, I know, are they an overpriced brand? Certainly. But everybody that I know that has tried Chantecaille is obsessed with their skin tint. In fact, my mother-in-law, anytime I get something from Chantecaille, especially skincare, I try to hand that over to her because she loves their skincare. I think they are great for mature skin, but they're also great for really young skin. I mean, I don't want to encourage you to buy Chantecai for young skin. Young kids don't need Chantecai, but they really have beautiful ingredients for the skin that I believe is pretty natural for this skin. And the skincare comes through in this product. I can tell that this product was made buy a skincare brand. It doesn't break my skin out at all. Um, it has pretty good longevity because it almost has a stickiness to it that sticks to the skin well. It's more of a flat finish. It's not truly matte, but it also doesn't have a true glow, which I think is a little bit more true to the natural finish of skin. And because it's a little bit more on the flat side, it's not going to emphasize texture quite as much. So this is a beautiful one where you can do whatever. You could probably exercise in this and your skin won't get upset with this product. This product is called Just Skin, and I really agree with that statement about this. It is a splurge. Keep that in mind, but it is a nice one. Oh, and also in terms of coverage, true light coverage. Does just enough to even you out a little bit. You can see the coverage since it is a little bit darker on me, so it will add a veil of color over the skin. The next one that I have is from Glossier. This one came out before skin tints were trending. This is the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I have mine in the shade G10. I can absolutely see an audience for this product, but this product is not for me. I have said this numerous times over. This is just a tinted water. For me, it rubs out into the skin like nothing. Now, it works out into the skin really beautifully if you guys are seeing this, but that's because there's no tint to it, so you can't really see any of the pigment. This almost has a nice, like, hydrating feel, so my skin likes the way that this product feels, but for me, it's useless. You literally can't even see it. It did add a little bit of a glow to the skin that you can see that's very pretty, but this is almost like a base. Like this is what I want a makeup primer to do to my skin. Now, who is this product for? If you truly don't want too much color to your skin, this is great. It will give you a little boost without looking like actual makeup. I think this is... If your skin is like perfectly clear and it's looking a little dull, this is a good boost of glow. Or I think it's really great for young teenagers just getting into makeup. This is perfect to wear to school, you know. They want to go through the process of applying makeup, but a product like this is much more appropriate just to not have full coverage for school, but they still feel like they have that tint, that glow to the skin. I don't find this to be offensive at all to sensitive skin because I do have sensitive skin, but for me, a useless product, tinted water, but more closer to water than tint. So it makes the finish, the surface of the skin look pretty, but does nothing in the way of actually tinting. Oh, also wear time on this. It's okay. I find if anything, it makes me look a little greasy at the end of the day. So, eh. 
Next on the list is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen. This has SPF 30. I'm going to use the shade number 20 today. I would say Tower 28 has a very curated list of products. This one does have a more liquidy consistency. I feel like this palette looks gross. It's not. It's just for me using it literally today. Tower 28 doesn't have the largest range of products, but let me tell you something. I love every single product that Tower 28 has put onto the market except for this one. And don't get me wrong, this is not a bad product. But I never look at the mirror when I wear this skin tint and think to myself, I'm having a good makeup day. It's just one of those products where you almost can't pinpoint it, but your makeup is just not, I'm saying your, I'm talking about me, but it's just one of those products where I can't pinpoint it, but I never have a good makeup day. And this is the common denominator whenever I'm not having a good makeup day. This one I would say has a little bit more of a fuller coverage in today's video it still is like a light coverage but it gives us a little bit more it doesn't have too glowy of a finish as you can see but it also isn't too matte my issue with this is i feel like it emphasizes texture pores and just kind of sits on top of the skin it doesn't necessarily become one with the skin but it's not in an offensive way like when i was talking about the bobby brown the rare beauty it's unflattering right away when you apply it this one it doesn't look bad i don't feel like i need to redo my makeup at all but it doesn't have the special on top that makes me enjoy my makeup it doesn't do anything to improve any part of my skin it more so evens so that's the only improvement but in terms of the texture it doesn't do anything for my skin it also doesn't wear the best it looks a little bit thicker and greasier towards the end of the day so it doesn't have the longevity that i'm looking for and it just doesn't stand out. I would say this is an average product. It's not a bad product. It's an average skin tint that doesn't stand out against its competitors. That being said, this is Tower 28's worst product. Everything else that they have is phenomenal, but this is my least favorite product from them. And even then, like my skin looks good now, but normally it kind of breaks down and looks more dry and heavy at the end of the day. This is a product that I tested specifically for this video because I know it's quite viral. This is the Say Slip Tint Broad Spectrum Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 35. I'm using the shade three and a half. Now this is amongst, I would say, the more unique skin tints in today's video. It's probably the thickest in consistency and it does not rub onto the skin very well. You have to really work it out. It almost gets stuck and clumpy on the face. I'm so sorry when it goes out of focus. I do not know why my camera likes my ears so much. But anyways, it applies clumpy, which is quite off-putting if I do say so myself. But after you take a little bit of extra time to work the clumpiness out, it actually has a very pretty finish on the skin. Personally, I would not recommend this product to those of you with oily skin because it can read a little greasy on the skin. It also is sticky. So for somebody like me who has a lot of baby hairs and flyaways and growth coming in, my hairs stick to my face when I wear this. So that for me is a pretty big turnoff about this product because every time I've worn this, I've had to like look in the mirror for ch to check for hair sticking to my face. It doesn't have a set down, so your face does continue to feel sticky throughout the day. However, the finish of it is really beautiful. It's one of the more glowy ones that I'm going to be talking about today. I also feel like it becomes one with the skin. So I love how smooth and glassy this product looks on my skin. However, if it's going to be a sweaty day for me, I'm not going to be reaching for this product. This is more for like a run out to run errands for a short amount of time because my skin looks really healthy with this. It's especially great when you're wearing your hair up so that your hair doesn't stick to it. And all things considered, it's one of the more fuller coverage products that I'm talking about in today's video. It's on the heavier side of light coverage. 
Because of its glowy nature, it emphasizes pores a little bit more than some of the other skin tints that I'm mentioning today. But I can see people having mixed opinions with this. I can see why some people wouldn't like it. I can see why some people would like it. I personally like the finish a lot on my skin. It's really healthy. It's really glowy. But oily skin, it's a no for you. I think you can look really greasy with this unless you set well. And you do have to be mindful of your hairstyle for the day because it does remain sticky, which I don't really like about that. Like, do you see how my hair sticks to this? So there's definitely some pros and cons with this one. Overall, though, I do like it. Next, we have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. This one has SPF 40. I'm using the shade Shella ST8. ST8. I feel like my thoughts on this are pretty unique to everybody else's. It's a very thin, watery product. So I've got to be honest with you all, I do not like this as a skin tint. It does have a thicker feel on the skin. Not thicker, because it is like a watery product, but it has a heavy feel on the skin. It rubs out very easily with fingers. This is really greasy and heavy though, so I have never liked the look of this on my skin, particularly if you're like a sweaty person like I am, or if you are an oily person. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this product. I'm sure there's plenty of people, considering how popular it is, that have oily skin that like it, but I just feel like I'm putting straight up oil on my skin whenever I use this product. And the only word I can use to really describe it is greasy. It does give a little bit of coverage here, as you can see, almost a medium, honestly. One of the more full skin tints in coverage that you'll find on the market. But it looks really heavy. I'll give it credit that it doesn't look like it's sitting on top of the skin. It is a product that does become one with the skin. But I can feel this on my skin. I can feel it weighing down. And as the day goes on, my skin just becomes greasier and greasier. So I'm not a fan of this product. However... I love to mix this product in with other foundations. So if I have a drier foundation, I like to mix this in and it will instantly make that foundation more hydrating and more skin-like. I also like to use this product to mix out and blend out foundation sticks easier as well. It's great to thin out a really full coverage thick foundation also. So on the skin alone, it doesn't do much for me in my opinion. I can see a lot of people loving this. Like if you have viciously dry skin and you don't mind the thicker, heavier feel, I think you might actually like this because it does remedy the feeling of the skin in terms of dryness needing hydration. But I'm not a big fan of this on its own. However, it is a product that I've repurchased two or three times now at this point because of how I like to use it, which is not the way that they originally intended. Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. I don't believe this one has any SPF in it. And I'm going to use the shade Light Neutral. This is a newer product that just launched in the last couple of months. To be honest, typically when it comes to Kosas, I really don't love their products, but this product is really beautiful. Oh, this one is light on me. I have a couple of shades. I don't think that this is my normal shade, but we'll continue to talk about it. So it's almost similar to the Say Slip Tint where it's almost chunky and you have to work it out, but this one is a product that works really great with fingers. This has almost no coverage, just like the Glossier, but I actually like this better than the Glossier because it gives a hint more coverage to the point where I don't feel like it's a tinted water. Whenever I put this all over my face, it truly looks like I'm not wearing any product, but it leaves my skin, to put it simply, looking better, which is the intention of this. This is a true definition of a no makeup makeup product. It's very easy to work with and you can't even tell that you've applied it to the skin, but it gives just enough of a tint to where everything just looks a little bit more even. It's extremely light coverage. I want to say probably the second lightest in coverage following behind the Glossier. 
but it is perfect if you want to look like you're not wearing any makeup. I love this product when I don't want to put on anything else, like maybe just a little bit of brow gel and this to make myself look better without looking like I actually have any product on because even with skin tints, sometimes you put them on and you just need other makeup to accompany it. Otherwise, your face looks unfinished. This isn't a product that looks unfinished on the skin. It's so natural, but it's your skin but better i am a huge fan of this product for no makeup makeup days which i don't have often if i'm being honest with you so i won't reach for this product a ton but for what it is if that's your style of makeup it works really well and it wears very well also i haven't had any issues with longevity on this oh and for dry skin yes it does feel hydrating on the skin i have two chunky ball tinted serums so the first one is from Rose Ink. It's the Luminous Tinted Serum. And I'm surprised I didn't put the Chanel one. I don't have the sheer Chanel one. I have like the full coverage one, so I think that's why. But anyways, I do have the Rose Ink Skin Enhanced Luminous Tinted Serum. I'm using the shade 040. This one is a little dark on me. But this one is one of those ball products. It comes out really thin and then you have to mix it on your hand or on your palette. Okay, I know my plate looks dirty right now. I swear it's not, but like look at how that. That already looks like it's going to give trouble. I really, I don't, oh, I said it was too dark. Literally ignore me. This is too light. What am I talking about? I was thinking of another color that I had because I originally bought this in too dark of a color. The point of me showing you this is to show you how difficult it is to get even coverage and application on the skin with this product. I find it extremely difficult to blend out and get an even application. With most of these skin tints, you'll notice I was able to get most of a blend done with my fingers. And then as I try and use a brush, it gets stuck. And now she's patchy. I don't know. I've never been able to make this product work. This is, in my opinion, of what I've tried the worst of the ball, <laughs> the pearl foundations. It's just impossible to work this into the skin and get anything even. It also is clinging to dryness on my skin. I don't have a good thing to say about this other than it looks really cool. But go with the Chanel or if you really are attracted to these balls, <laughs> go for the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence Hydro Fresh Tint. I have mine in the shade Light Medium. This one by far is better than the Rose Ink. And that should make you guys happy because it's cheaper as well. Now I do recommend blending this out on the hand but because this product is so unique I want you guys to see the blend out on the face. Though the rose ink I did go in on my palette and blend but that's because blending it was impossible either way. But it is better to blend this out on your hand because you do have to put a little bit of work when you apply it this way but you can get it done I promise. But this is not a bad product. Now, originally, everybody was comparing this to the Chanel version of this foundation, and that is better than this CoverGirl. So that Chanel, as it should based on the price, trumps the CoverGirl and the Rose Ink. But the CoverGirl is a happy medium if you were in between the Rose Ink, the Chanel, or the CoverGirl, because the CoverGirl is more affordable and it works much better. I would say this versus the Chanel. The Chanel has more coverage, but this CoverGirl is a happy medium. It does sit a little bit more on top of the skin. The Chanel blends in like a dream on the skin, so I don't know if you can see. It's just not perfectly smooth on the skin. I can make this work. I haven't been offended by this product. I've worn this out. Honestly, it has pretty good longevity as well. You know, for the price point, comparing it to other foundations that are similar to this. This is a decent product. It's not a mind-boggling product. It's definitely, I don't want to say more gimmicky, but it's more fun because of the consistency and the component here. And it's nice. I don't notice it to be overly hydrating on my skin 
though, but it does feel light and fresh on the skin. It's a decent product and especially for drugstore where I find their complexion can be hit or miss for me, this is a good one to pick up from the drugstore for a light coverage. It's teetering on medium, not quite a medium coverage. Look how bad this rose ink, it just like completely unfixable. But this is riding along the medium line of coverage, but not quite hitting it. It's more fun than anything. It's okay. It's like a product where I'd finish it up, but I wouldn't repurchase it. Decent pickup from the drugstore though. Okay, I have a couple of drugstore options next. So the first one that I have is from L'Oreal. It's the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. I have mine in the shade light medium. This one's a little off in color, just a fair warning. There's a few of these squeeze bottle foundations at the drugstore. Sometimes I mix them up. So this one has like a broken squishy tube. You have to really take your time. Yeah, no, that's not <laughs> That's not gonna work. We're just gonna put this straight on the face. The tone of this one is way off on me. By the way, I am filming this the next day. My skin was screaming from all of the tinted moisturizers yesterday, so I wanted to give my skin a break and finish it off the next day. So ignore <laughs> ignore the shade. This gives a light coverage as pretty much every single one of these do, but it's one of the more quote unquote full of the light coverage that's available. It does have a thicker consistency. This one to me is semi forgettable in terms of the skin tint market. However, it is a good option if you're quickly picking up something from a drugstore or looking for an affordable option. This one is more like a true foundation as opposed to what I would call a skin tint. It has like a demi matte finish to it. There is a little bit of glow, but it's actually quite realistic to the finish of skin, just a little bit more matte than the average skin tint. So I don't know if you can see, but it definitely has more coverage than most of the skin tints here. The wear on this one is average. I do find as the day goes on, it looks a little heavier on the skin, which is what we don't want from a skin tint. We want it to look as light as possible. But this one is definitely a very decent option. It does become one with the skin when applied, but it's one of the more perfecting ones, which actually you might like. But it leans a little bit away from the skin tint genre and more into the foundation, if you ask me. But it's nice, it's lightweight, this is a good option. I think this one would be suited more towards those of you with oily skin. I have dry skin, it looks good and soft on my skin. But you know, skin tints can be tricky on oily skin because they can make you look really greasy. This one's not going to do that. But it's still good on dry skin. The next one that I have is from Neutrogena. This is the Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation. Also horrible unusable packaging. So I have mine in the shade medium 01. And this one also has a bad applicator but better than the last. This one has a more liquidy base to it. It's a very sheer natural coverage. Can you tell I bought this in the summer? So you'll be able to see the difference from the L'Oreal of this product in the finish. Don't pay attention to the yellowy color though. <laughs> Okay, using my brush to press this into the skin. This one has more glow than the L'Oreal as well. Not that this is a comparisons video, but it does make it easier for me to verbalize what differentiates this from other skin tints since there are an overwhelming amount to choose from. So this one is more true to the nature of a skin tint. It is a tint on the skin, but it does give some coverage. It's not in tinted water territory. It has a healthy glow to the skin and it does feel hydrating. And this has a nice long wear time. I generally speaking really enjoy this product as a skin tint. I haven't gotten to use it recently because the shade is way off. But in the summer, this is nice. It's lightweight. I enjoyed wearing this in Miami a lot. And it's on the more affordable front, which makes it even better. So if you're looking for a good kind of what you would consider to be a classic skin tint formulation and you don't want to break the bank, I do recommend this Neutrogena one. The biggest con to it is the packaging is really cheap and you kind of have to work with it. But 
This has the basic characteristics of a skin tint and very nice performance. So I like this one a lot. And just for my personal preference, not that this is a comparison video, but I'm really seeing how different these are from one another. This one is like getting more dry by the second. If I had to pick one, I'm definitely choosing the Neutrogena. It's the one that I've worn a lot more and reached for over the L'Oreal. And then I have this one from the drugstore. This is the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator Tinted Skin Veil. I have mine in the shade light medium. Not only is this my favorite tinted moisturizer from the drugstore, it is one of my all-time favorite tinted moisturizers, period. This you could put a luxury price point on and it would fool me. Because first of all, Wet n Wild is one of the most affordable drugstore brands, but this tinted moisturizer is incredible. This is hydrating for my dry skin. It does have that light coverage that we're looking for, but if you pair it with a concealer, you get more of a perfected look. It soaks into the skin beautifully. It becomes one with the skin, so it doesn't look like there's a layer of product over the skin. This one's one of my favorites just because it makes my skin look hydrated and supple and exactly what I want. If I'm reaching for a skin tint slash tinted moisturizer, I want it to be hydrating. I want it to look pretty undetectable on the skin and that is what I get with this product. And because it's so hydrating, it just makes the base of my skin and my natural skin look really beautiful. So I will wear this for looks that maybe I would typically require more of a full coverage foundation from because I want my skin to look perfect. While this doesn't have the most coverage, it makes it look like I have near perfect skin. So it doesn't even matter. Just like the texture, you know, I don't mind a little bit of freckled showing. So I'm just saying, if you're balling on a budget, or not, this is just a product I recommend to have in your collection for those lighter makeup days. I have heard so many people with mature skin as well love this. This is a mature skin friendly product also. The fact that the price point is what it's at is truly unbelievable for what you get. This is literally like putting a moisturizer on your skin but it makes it look better with the coverage. So this is one of my tip top recommendations. This one's kind of random, like it's not related to the Wet n Wild, but this one didn't have a partner that I could pair it with. But I wanted to talk about the Kali Ray Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint in the shade number 4. And while this is about viral talked about skin tints, this one is not. It's underrated, but I wanted to mention it because it deserves to be talked about. I love this product. Now it's a really thin, watery consistency and it does lean more closer to a foundation. Like honestly, I would categorize this as a foundation if they didn't actually name this a tint. And I'm going by what the brands are calling a tint because some of these I don't necessarily agree with or categorize as a skin tint just based on how they perform, but that doesn't mean I don't like it. But I do want to go with how the brand prefers to identify them. So this one I did a really thin layer to get that tinted look, but this one builds up on coverage. So like I said, this does act as more of a foundation if you ask me, but it's really lightweight on the skin, but it makes the skin look really smooth and supple. So this is just with a really light layer of coverage, but I find when you put a thicker layer on the skin, that you do get more of a covered, perfected look. And it's not one of those products where if you layer more on, you can see the layers. It starts to look thick as a product. No matter, well, I don't wanna say no matter how many, but if you put on a respectable amount but still layer it on, it isn't going to look like a heavy layer of makeup is on the skin. So you can see I did that second layer. I immediately got more coverage, which isn't something that you get from a typical skin tint normally. You get what you get and you don't get upset with a skin tint. So this is one of the more underrated options that I wanted to talk about. What sets this apart from other products is its ability to build up in coverage, which leans it more towards a foundation, but you still get that hydrated effect 
the semi-glowy finish. This isn't the glowiest on the market, but it's not going to completely matte you out as well. I don't necessarily recommend this for oily skin. I think you can probably get it to work, but don't layer on too much. I find that my dry skin personally thrives with this one. Yeah, and so this one has like really flown under the radar, but it's a fantastic skin tint. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the last skin tint, and it's definitely one of the most viral that I've seen, the Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint. This is a fabulous product, but let me tell you something. I made this product last because this is not a skin tint. I know they want to market it as a skin tint, but it's not. This baby gets full coverage. Nothing about this is tinted. I think they were going off of the fact that of the packaging and it has a thin consistency. Thin consistency, but very full coverage. Uh, so I just want to preface that I don't even consider this a skin tint, but because they do, I'm putting it in this video because you're probably looking for skin tints and this was the most viral one. But baby, this is a full coverage foundation. And it's fabulous though. This gives a pearly look to the skin. You can even see close up in the bottle, the pearls in here. I've seen pearl skin kind of trending. That is what this gives. This is such a unique product. I have this in a better shade somewhere. I don't know where it went. So I'm going to mix 102 and 120. The dropper on this is not fabulous. I definitely put way too much of that light color in, but it's okay. I'm working out with my trainer later, so I'm not gonna have this on for very long. Anyways, it's a watery, thin consistency. The dropper works better than most drugstore packaging of this nature, but this baby gives full coverage, but I love it because it looks so thin on the skin and it looks smooth. I love a foundation that makes my skin look soft and smooth to the touch, and I do highly recommend this product from the drugstore if you're looking for a good foundation that gives really nice coverage, that doesn't feel or look too heavy on the skin, that's smoothing. This is the one. Hold on, let me let me blend this out properly. <laughs> there we have it. My thoughts on 19 of the most viral skin tints that I've tried to prep you for the upcoming summer weather. Now I wanted to round this video up by going over each skin tint that I talked about and rating it hot or not. You know, hot being a yes, it's worth it if you're interested, it's a good product, and not means, you know, she's not a good product. So let's get into it. Hourglass Skin Tint, hot. Danessa Myrick Super Serum Skin Tint, hot. Must buy these. Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer, hot. A classic. Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint, not. Like, not, not, not. Fenty Beauty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint, Hot. Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. Not. Too thick for me. Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. Not. But there is an audience for it. Shantikai Just Skin Tinted Moisturizer. Hot. Say Slip Tint. Warm. I'm warm about this one. Pretty warm. Leaning more towards hot, but doesn't quite deserve the title. Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen. I'll give this one lukewarm. <laughs> it's not quite a knot, but it's definitely not a hot. Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. Another warm, because I don't like it on its own, but it's a necessary in my collection. I'm not doing good at just saying hot or not. Kosas BB Burst Tinted Gel Cream. Hot. Rose Ink Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum. Not. CoverGirl Simply Agent Skin Perfector Essence. Hot. L'Oreal True Match Nude. This one's hot. Neutrogena Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation, hot. Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator, literal fire. Kali Ray Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint, hot. And finally, Maybelline Superstay Skin Tint, hot, but not a skin tint. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Now, I need your help. I want you to share your skin type in the comments down below and which skin tints you've tried and what you thought about it, especially if you have oily skin. That would be super helpful because I can only speak on my experiences. This was intended to be a guide for you to give you my thoughts on these viral products, being as honest and thorough as I could be. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.